Welcome everyone. This is another video in this lecture series on the contemporary world. In this lesson, we'll be talking about the economic interdependence and the, in and the impact of COVID-19. Now, economic interdependence is a consequence of specialization or the division of labor. The participants of any economy or economic system must belong to a trading network to obtain products that they can produce efficiently for themselves. Any chance or change in such a network affects other participants on the network so that the demand for various products and income of the participants are interdependent. What does it mean? Well, it simply means that each of the country worldwide, as we have discussed in the previous video in this lecture series, that no one is an island, that no one can provide for their own without the expertise of other countries. And so there is an example that we have provided in the previous videos in this lecture series wherein the tires are made in the United States, the paint are manufactured in China, and the steel are from Africa, the electronics come from Japan. And so there you go. You have a full running car. So that is an economic interdependence wherein countries in the world are actually communicating with each other with the expertise that they have in exchange for the availability of raw materials also from other countries. And so that's the reason why there, are, there is a, an exchange, import and exports of products worldwide, especially in this modern time where there is a movement towards the concept of what we call as globalization. Now, economic interdependence is something that we can no longer stop. Everyone in the world having trade connection with one another. Each countries have connection all over the world in order to ensure that their economy will continue to prosper. Now, the economic independence and war. Now, what is the effect of economic interdependence and the possibility of what we call as a conflict? an armed conflict in regions all around the world where one of the most highly watched situation in the world is the problem in the claim of China towards the island as a province of China and Taiwan. Although Taiwan is recognized by the United States as an independent country, many countries in the world still do not recognize Taiwan as an independent country because they believe that Taiwan is a province of uh, the mainland China. But while it is true that Taiwan was recognized by the United States, China is also a powerful country and does not recognize Taiwan as, a, as an independent country. And so there is a looming war in that particular region. But economic interdependence played a very important role in the prevention of war in the entire world. Tanius in 2019 published a study in a referred journal which provides that the economic inter interdependence is proved to have significantly decreased the onset of conflict between the two parties. This can be shown by comparing the number of armed conflicts during the pre-interdependence period to the number of armed conflicts after the economic interdependence. This is a study published in a referred journal by Tanius 2019, The Impact of Economic Interdependence on the Probability of Conflict Between States. This case focuses on the American-Chinese relationship on Taiwan since 1995, meaning that economic interdependence actually helped the countries be friendly to each other because they are at some point interdependent. If the Chinese government, if Chinese economy will fall, the United States will also be affected. If the American economy will fall, China will also be affected. Though they have a contradicting claim on the independence of Taiwan, the reality is there is a very small possibility in the near future that there will is this will escalate into an armed 
conflict or, or into a full-blown war because, you know, economically, it is devastating to both countries if war will break out. And so, good side of economic interdependence is that it will prevent huge damages through wars all throughout the world because instead of getting into war, why not cooperate for mutual progress? Now, the impact of COVID-19 in the middle of economic interdependence. First is unemployment. Unemployment. Because countries in the, in the world are actually doing some kind of a survival mode because there is a pandemic that is ravaging the countries worldwide. And so there is, there is massive unemployment in the world today. There is an increased instance of poverty because in relation to number one, there is unemployment and so people don't have the source of income and therefore creating a more widespread effect of poverty in general. And because there is unemployment, there is also reduced income. Reduced income on a corporate level and reduced income on an individual level. There is also deterioration of health due to lack of activities and exercise. Many of the people who are staying at home for almost one year now, or probably around eight months already, they are staying at home and they are not engaged in any kind of activity. And so many of them are developing kidney disease or at some point hypertension because they are just eating so much probably at some point. And so... That's the reason why there is a deterioration of health and people are, are afraid of going to the hospitals because they are afraid that they might caught coronavirus or COVID-19 in our hospitals. There is also an economic deterioration in all countries of the world and its domino effect. Meaning when the United States closed its borders, closed its uh, economy for a brief period of time, it has created a tremendous impact on countries all throughout the world that relies on the U.S. economy. When, when countries in the, Euro, in the European continent close their doors against, against economic exchange, it has a tremendous impact in African countries and Southeast Asian countries where these countries in Europe are actually having trades with. And so this is a problem of economic interdependence, especially during pandemics like what we are experiencing at this particular moment, because this will actually create a more rapid effect, even to those countries that doesn't have those particular viruses. There is no infection. Of viruses or there is limited infection of viruses but the economic effect will certainly at some point create a havoc in their economy because huge countries such as the United States, China, Japan, Korea and the European countries were actually deeply affected by it and so the domino effect will be so huge that in the next few years we will still be on route to recovery. Now, the economic interdependence and the impact of COVID-19. If you look at these charts, I don't know if you understand this chart, but we'll, trust, we'll just try to describe what is happening in this chart. Now, if you look at the first chart with the in the upper left chart, that is the Philippine Stock Exchange Index. And that is the that is how the economy of the Philippines performed during the pandemic. Now, if you look at the March, middle March to April uh, chart, there is a considerable drop of the economy of the Philippines down to only around four thousand points in the Philippine stock exchange. In effect, it has wiped out significant amount significant amount of wealth now on the other side in the upper right 
hand of the screen, there is the stock exchange in, the, in New York, in the United States. And so just the same, around April, there is a considerable drop of the economy in the stock market. And so it has also wiped out considerable amount of wealth at this particular artist at this particular time during march april may although there is also a an increase steadily on the economy including the philippines also there is a an increasing trend in the economy yet we can observe that there is similarity and if we go back uh, and if we go to the bottom level you will see the stock exchange in Japan, wherein the economy also plunged around March or April during the onset of the pandemic. And then around May, there is also a, an increase steadily of the, of the economy. And so what we can observe of, the, of this is the fact of economic interdependence, that each countries in the world have actually suffered the same economic loss and the same slow increase of the economy, meaning that they are connected and interconnected with each other and that the economy of the United States, Japan, and the Philippines in this particular slide is connected with each other. There is a domino effect. Now, if you observe, there is an, a uniform economic drop in all parts of of the globe even if you look at the stock exchanges in london or probably in shanghai or in hong kong or in taiwan or in singapore for that instance you will observe that there is a uniform drop and uniform increase and steady increase of the economy as it recovers from the pandemic which of course means that economic interdependence has its own problem, especially on the concept of domino effect of economic deterioration. Now, the rise of conspiracy theories. During the pandemic, during the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a rise of conspiracy theory wherein the United States actually accusing of China of manufacturing that particular virus and this is actually because by history there were a lot of viruses that had come from china like the polio virus outbreak in 2000 the ah5n1 or the avian flu in around 2004-2005 sars or severe acute respiratory syndrome this is also from china and you all know probably or probably you're too young to remember that SARS actually was a very frightening virus during that particular time, as well as influenza virus, AH9N2 in 2003, human influenza infection in AH7N9 in 2013, AH5N6 on in 2014, the yellow fever in 2016, the novel coronavirus in 2020, and just recently, the G4EA H1N1 influenza in 2020. And there are also reports that bubonic plaque is also ravaging in the northern portion of China. And so that's the reason why, by the way, the source of this one is the World Health Organization. You can visit the link by scanning on the QR code that is displayed in your screen. Now, the viruses... These viruses are actually from China, and this is only within the span of 20 years. So there are outbreaks of viruses, around 9 to 10 viruses in just a matter of 20 years. Meaning, on average, every two years, there is an influenza outbreak or a virus outbreak in China. And so, while, while this is true, this is also a half-truth, because in the United States, there are also viruses that actually spread like anthrax for example or the swine flu also in the united states and other viruses that had come from the united states and other countries in the world or probably in saudi arabia the mers or middle east uh, 
coronavirus or mers -Cov. So, this is not entirely, uh, entirely true, but this one is also the reality that there were actually a lot of viruses that originated or at least um, spread throughout China that eventually infected the world. Now, there is also a conspiracy, a conspiracy that because of that, you know, the Wuhan virus laboratory actually manufactured the COVID-19 or coronavirus and then infected the scientists uh, in Wuhan laboratory and then eventually created a domino effect that actually ravages the entire Wuhan province and then flown all throughout the world and this is where we are right now the Chinese virus pandemic that is according to President Donald Trump of the United States now there are also conspiracy theories that this could be a biological weapon from China and that the United States government accused China of cover up, covering up the pandemic hence it affected people all over the world and according to the President of the United States that there are sources that links to Wuhan virus laboratory with respect to this pandemic on COVID-19. And so according to the United States government that this could be a biological weapon that got out of control. That's the reason why the government of China is covering the reality behind this particular pandemic. Now, if you want to watch a video of 60 minutes about the cover-up of uh, the pandemic or COVID-19 in China, you can scan on the QR code that is displayed in your screen at this particular moment. And then you will be redirected to a YouTube video that will show you. And this is a 60-minute documentary on how Chinese government created a cover-up on COVID-19 that eventually broken out of the world and killed more than a million as of this particular moment. But of course, China's response is to deny. Uh, who would, who would, you know, admit that they have done something wrong? Or probably China did not even do something that is wrong in this particular case. Or it's just uh, they were just a victim of blaming but nevertheless we don't know the entire story so we will not come into conclusion the accusation of the united states government against china's biological weapon is pure fabrication and, in, and is not true that is according to chinese response even adding that scientific experts also commented that there is no significant scientific evidence that the virus came from a laboratory instead it came from a wet market in Wuhan, China, wherein there is a animal to human transmission of the virus that eventually spread to entire Wuhan city. Now, the COVID cases worldwide, if you look at these figures, we have the United States with 7 million, 7.8 million infected cases. And there is around 2,400 people per 1,000 people infected of COVID-19 with 215,803 deaths or around 66 people per 100,000 people. Brazil, Russia, Colombia, Argentina, so on down to Saudi Arabia. And so we look at this and you could be horrified by the figures with a lot of deaths now totaling around 1 million deaths worldwide. And so what are the things that you have to do during a coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic? Well, of course, this has been provided already repeatedly, but I will just repeat this one so that you will be reminded what are the things that you have to do. First is you have to wash your hands regularly with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Avoid touching your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. Cover your mouth or nose when coughing or sneezing. Use only disposable tissues and dispose them immediately after use. Practice social distancing by staying 1.5 meters. 
Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary that you have to go out. Now there is no pandemic if we will be vigilant enough to protect ourselves from the harmful and hazardous virus that are ravaging the world today. So as much as possible, as much as possible, if you don't need to go out, just don't go out because you could be infected at any time. Stay where you are, stay in your home and follow the instructions about the prevention on how to spread the coronavirus. I hope you learned something in this video. See you in the next lesson.